I guess we wouldn't need it for the group, I guess. Um, I know, for the recording. Yeah, so, so even if we are maybe not that many, I would be already happy if like you take one thing and you carry that on to your team and maybe this way spread the word and so you are the right people, right? Okay, so um, you might know me from, from the books that I've written or also from me speaking here or maybe at other places. That's not the only thing that I'm doing or have done. I'm also an ecological, com oh, I never can say that, pollution commissioner, ecological com pollution commissioner, which I did many years ago. I never really worked in that area, but this is also part of my background next to a few other things. And um, with that comes also my interest in like, what do we need to do because the planet is on fire and it's our fault. And there are like a, a few examples also around why this is important to me. One is that the, the biggest problems we are having or seeing and facing in the, in the earth right now on the planet are based on us destructing the nature. And this is a picture from where I live and the forest is almost completely dead. So this is um, just a huge damage. My other concern comes with my passion for scuba diving. And as a scuba diver, I'm concerned about this that, well, by 2050, it's expected there will be more plastic in the sea than fish. I see you already kind of, oh my, yeah, I know, right? Um, and another uh, forecast is that already by 2030, all coral reefs will be severely damaged that it's probably not able to repair it. And um, so I always thought, well, this has to do with politics. This has maybe to do with my private life. How do I work and, and do stuff? However, what I found out is, meanwhile, there's also a lot on our fingertips as people in the agile space or in IT software space that we can do. And so this is what I want to focus on today. And my Agenda is kind of my preferred one, what, so, what, now, what, and we start with the what, which is about, well, kind of the welcoming, what we are doing right now, but also, which maybe takes a little bit longer, about defining what's the understanding of sustainability that I'm using here and with what I'm working so that it can help me in my daily work and therefore, hopefully, it helps you as well. Then uh, the so, so what is about connecting the whole thing to agile agility. And the third one is now what, what can we actually do? And this is also the data related part, although I have already at the beginning something about data. Let's see. So let's look at the definition of sustainability. And if you have um, already dealt with that, that might be something you, you know. But let's see. So, oh, so yeah, we start with what? So that's the kind of the first definition that came for came out about sustainability, and it's uh, based on the so-called Brundtland Report, which is a report created by the United Nations. And in in general, it just says whatever we are doing. But no matter what it is, we should always have in mind that the future generations can do what they need to do for having a good life, right? So that whatever we do, we have a long-term perspective and not only thinking about ourselves. Then another definition that comes from the United Nations and often we see a lot of posters around that, these are the 17 sustainable development goals. And... Um, to be honest, again, I try to use that stuff in my daily work, and for the Brundtland definition, it often is too broad for me, and the 17 sustainability development goals, they are often too fine-grained for me. Because if, if I read something like, well, even as a scuba diver, 
something like life under water. Let me see, that's number 14 here. In my daily work, I ha don't have clients doing anything with that necessarily, or, or well, me living in the Western world and then um, no poverty or zero hunger. It's kind of far from what I do, like when I write software, right? And therefore, my preferred definition for sustainability is the one that's based on three pillars, so three different areas. And I just want to go briefly through those. The first one is focusing on social and people, which means like aiming for equity, health, and livability. And now trying to translate this already to software and IT, so there are topics like diversity, inclusion, accessibility, and all, well, diversity and inclusion is maybe something we talk for a few years a bit more than we did in the past. Yet accessibility, I think, is still something a lot ignored. And actually, if once you start looking out for that, you see a lot of things that are not working well, especially in IT and software, because, well, we, we don't think about it. And it can be something like um, that if people need to enter their last name, that uh, it's requested that a specific amount of characters are entered, like three characters is a typical thing. But if you look at people, especially like Vietnam or so, they often have only two characters in their last name. And so they can't access it. And it can be all, all kinds of things. It's just like one example, right? And often it is, we don't think enough about this, that the software we are writing is actually for people who are all kinds of people who are different than we are, different than anyone on our team is, and so on. So we have to think broader here. The second pillar is that that comes most often at first in mind when we talk about sustainability, which is the environment or the planet, which is about protecting the planet. So the stuff that I said before, like my passion for scuba diving, or that I see that forest dying right in front of my house, more or less. Um, and there we can at least start asking the question, what is actually the carbon footprint of the systems that we are creating, both while we are creating it and while it's operating and its use, and what can we do about this? So you see I'm trying to connect it already to software and IT going through that definition. And the third pillar is uh, the economic and now called, this has changed prosperity to its Prosperity, before it was called profit, so last fall this has been changed, and which is about improving the lives of everyone and everywhere. And this might be a little bit harder, but I have also seen, unfortunately, too many examples also in IT where this has not been the case, and I sometimes I think maybe it's even a higher risk for us in Agile because in Agile we so often focus on the, on the customer's competitive advantage. That's exactly how it's in the principles of the Agile manifesto. However, we seldom look further what is the customer actually doing with that and is this helping the world or not? Is it excluding people or not? Does it do any harm or not? And um, Trying not to go too deep into this, but one example that is a good but very bad example is uh, a software called, Cla uh, called Chef. You probably or might have known it or know it. Yeah, Chef. Yeah, a cloud software, which has been used by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement in the U.S. to run the detention camps at the Mexican border where the kids have been separated from the parents. And, you know, even for stuff like that, Software is used, and sometimes we don't know, and, the, and in this case, it was also the people who had written the software, it was never their intention that the software will be used for something like that. And so my point here is sometimes we need to look further in order to understand what's really happening. So sustainability is actually kind of that holistic thing where all these three are coming together, 
And these three coming together also I find important because sometimes it's too easy to focus on one of the pillars at the cost of one of the other ones. And um, at least where I'm coming from, very often whenever people talk about like climate crisis and stuff like that, right with it comes like climate or social justice. And this is just like one example that if we would focus like on the one pillar, it might be very unjust and unfair and would not improve the lives of everyone everywhere. So we really have to take that all together to make the world a better place. Okay, so let me see. Um, all right, you might think that software comes to the rescue, like examples for that. You know, we have ebooks now instead of real books and other stuff. Yeah, there's a lot that we can do with software and IT that then gives away the physical thing. And it might help in some cases. Actually, in this case, it's even not clear. And um, so, and, and I'm really saying it the way I know it. So there are various data out there and this is sometimes the difficulty when you start digging into that topic because things are emerging all the time and we keep learning and so we often don't know. So one, one of the data points that I heard here was that for ebooks, especially if you're buying an ebook reader, then you might have to read 19,000 books in order to level it up to like reading physical books. So the problem here is very often we just, we buy new hardware and this is it what actually creates that big carbon footprint. So it's not in this case the energy we need for the ebooks, but it's the ebook reader that creates that problem. And again, there are also other data out there. So you, you cannot take that for granted. It's just one data point, and, and there are also other. Who? Okay, no input is detected. Why? Is this for a while? Do we know? Who? I don't. This here is power. Okay. Oh, but it. Yeah. It, now this is my power, and it seems there is power. This is not mine, this is connected. Uh, what does it say here? Battery is low, so it sounds like it's not loading. Ah, now it should load, no? Yeah, ah, it did? It's a little bit, actually. Can you check now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, bio setup. Thank you. Well, we are not there yet. <laughs> huh. oh. Well, it, it's booting here. I, I, ha I see something. So here's stuff going on. See? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. And of course, I prepared everything so well, I know. <laughs> this is cool. It's really where we have been. Wow. OK, it recovered. OK, so we were at this data point, and we are not sure if this is true or not. And, um, and if software is coming to the rescue or not. And it does in some cases, actually. The other thing is um, software also needs energy and it consumes a lot of energy. And there are also various forecasts, very dated points. One is that says by 2030, it's likely that IT consumes about 21% of energy, of the overall energy consumption. And, and just another data point here, because it just comes to my mind. Um, 
if you think of the internet, if that would be a country, it would be the seventh biggest country in terms of energy consumption. So I hope you get what I mean. Like we have a responsibility and we should really do something about that. Um, yeah, I have something else, which is e-waste, electronic waste. So the United Nations, Nations brings out a report every five years, and the last one was um, published in 2020, so it looked at the year 2019, and there it said like 53, 6.6 6 million metric tons have been generated as electronic waste. That's a plus of five of 21% in five years. And now again, as, as obviously you can see, I'm coming from the Western world and I guess we create way more e-waste than you are doing. However, I also looked at that. So India ranks number five in the world amongst top e-waste producing countries behind USA, China, China, Japan, and Germany, so my home country. And the thing is, you are, in India, not the ones creating the most per capita, which is more where Germany would be much higher, and, and US and so on, but recycling is not really happening here. So whatever is there is just going to the landfill. And so that's another problem. And now you, you could argue and say, okay, but we are doing IT in terms of software and not hardware. Well, the problem is most often hardware is thrown away because the software is not running properly on it anymore. If you think whenever you throw out your phone, probably it is because the apps are not running fine anymore. Maybe the OS is not supported anymore or you don't get any more updates and so on. And the same is actually true with the software we often write for our clients that we expect our clients to have the latest hardware. And this creates that problem as well. So we have to do a little bit more about that. Um, I have prepared something where I'm not sure, well, you can try it out, but we can also together take a look at it. Maybe you just go there. I give you the ones who want to go there. Um, a bit of a time to go there. And I want to show you this as well. Let me see, can I do this? Yes. So this is um, a small tool, and I see you can't read anything. Well, I still, I think I, I can tell you kind of how it works. Small tool where we can calculate our own digital carbon footprint. For example, I can say here, well, I do have a mobile internet and move it over there. And I do have a laptop and this is that one. Maybe I have as well a tablet and perhaps I, um, where's my phone actually? I don't see the phone right now. Well, um, whatever, I have a printer, perhaps one of you has a smartwatch and using some online storage. Online storage, yeah, it's there. And, oh, let's get really fancy. We also have an e-scooter. So with that tool, you can easily calculate what is your digital carbon footprint. It even allows you to say, like, okay, for the laptop, let me see, I have, can you read this also? Not really. I have maybe, um, Come on, oops, ah. I have more than one. I have three, let's just pick something and I use it more like seven hours uh, a day period of lifetime as maybe only three years, I'm just making that up. And um, I know you can't really see this well, but the idea is that we can also next to kind of our regular carbon footprint where for a long time I would say our tools out there which say like I don't know how we live and, and what food we eat and, and all of that. There's, there are also calculators there which look at the digital space only and that, that's interesting as well to look at that. So this is why I wanted to share that with you. Say it again. Ah. 
Yes, I don't know. Maybe we can do it like this. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to share something, uh, an analysis I had done uh, around 2019. Mm -hmm. So what I had calculated was that you just take an example of a ball pen. So it weighs around six to seven, eight, eight grams around, eight grams, 10 grams. It's made of fully of plastic. And typically I just said, okay, let's see how many ball pens are being used. So I just calculated roughly uh, one school would generate approximately one elephant size weight per year. And within one city, we would have more than 100 schools. Imagine what happens for the whole country. And then I was saying like, you know, if you want to really control that part of it, plastic is not bad, okay? But instead of using ballpoint pen, which is like throw away, I always recommend to use an ink pen, that's it. Yeah. Just a simple change. And if I were to map this into our software development li life, it would be like, you know, uh, adopt a hygiene mindset, wherein, for example, if you have to check in a code, ensure that it's not broken. It's as good as the saying, this is just no hygiene, I'm not doing anything. Right. Right. I'm sustainable in nature. So I just wanted to share that. Thank, thank you. This is excellent. Yeah. Um, often, often the big problem comes with scale. And sometimes it's also stuff where we think they are a solution, but because they are scaling, they are not anymore. And, um, well, just that, well, we have here the e-scooter. I know it's not seeable with the font. Um, but also electric cars. If everyone gets an electric car, oh my God, we are in deep trouble. You know, that's, it's not scaling for the planet. So, and that's, that makes it even harder then. Okay, so that was more like, okay, you can also look at stuff like that. Let me see if I can easily go back. Can I? Yeah, this is where we were. Um, ah, right. And then I wanted to share with you something which is along the same lines and which maybe is already a, a thing to do. Just today is Digital Cleanup Day. So there has been a World Cleanup Day for a long time where people clean up plastics or whatever in their parks and so on, neighborhoods. But now there's also for a couple of years Digital Cleanup Day and it's exactly today, March 18. So, and what you can think of, if you really need all these old pictures, photos that you have in the cloud or files. I know I have a lot of, especially files on Google Drive I haven't looked at for ages. And it's backed up by the cloud and we always feel the cloud is just, it, it comes for free. Well, it's not, right? So maybe this is also something, yeah, and here is like one of the data points that the, uh, each year the internet and its supporting system produce more than 900 million tons of CO2. So it is just a lot that's going on here. Okay, so this was defining sustainability. Now I want to connect it to Agile. And for doing so, first of all, I believe Agile made a promise. And if we look at, for example, Scrum Alliance mission, they say for a long time on a mission to create agile workplaces that are joyful, prosperous, and sustainable. The Agile Alliance has in their, well, they had it in their vision and now they have it for attracting members, uh, where they say through the last two decades, members like you have helped make work more effective, humane, and sustainable by applying the Agile mindset and methods. So it's in the vision and mission of the biggest organizations we have in Agile. And by the way, also Kanban has a statement around sustainability. So even if you are like, okay, I'm not in this field, I'm in a different one, no excuse. So there's a promise, and the question is, are we filling, living up to that promise or not? So far, well, I guess, I feel like we are getting started, so this is good, but a lot has to be done. And about getting started, this is one of the things that's, uh, that are happening within the Agile Alliance. There is now an Agile Sustainability Initiative that is created exactly for increasing the awareness that we do have a responsibility here. So 
So I only wanted to share that with you as well. Okay, so there is something here. Then if we go to now what, and I look at my watch and see what we can do. So for the now what, we have two different ways of being, taking our responsibility for more sustainability. And one is like sustainability by Agile or IT, which is we are using whatever we have at our fingertips and help to make the world a better place. Um, I have like one example from myself, which was last year, I helped together with a colleague of mine, Steve Hollier, who also was once a speaker here, a nonprofit organization in the climate space um, to come up with a new campaign and we use stuff like open space, event storming, story mapping, all that, that help them to make their next steps. So we have those tools at hand and can use them. Another example is uh, from Nicole Bellilos, also a colleague who is in the Scrum area more um, working. And what she did was um, for an organization, also a nonprofit organization that's called Hack Your Future, where she uh, acted as a scrum master and helped a team to, in this case, creating a food saver app. Now, Hack Your Future is an organization, I know it has spread, it started in the Netherlands where Nicole is from, but it's now in various countries, but I didn't, don't know if it's here. Um, and their idea is to help refugees so that they can show and improve their IT skills in order to get easier a job. So it is kind of helping refugees in, a, in the foreign country where they now are. And so this is the thing that she did. Another possibility, so this was sustainability um, by Agile. Another possibility is sustainability in Agile, which is we are using sustainability to, as a guidance for what we are doing. So we start asking questions all the time. Will this improve sustainability or make this, will this make the world worse? And um, there's like, yeah, I have two examples here. One is in your definition of done, why not? also looking at the carbon footprint of the system. So has it changed with the last stories you deployed or not? Another uh, example from um, what a colleague of mine also has even written up, Marjolaine Pilon, which is she's running a planet as a stakeholder retrospective every once in a while. What this means is like I'm making this up, let's say every fourth retrospective or so, or every second month or something, she says the focus of that retrospective is what if the planet is also one of our stakeholders? What would change? What would we need to do differently? What do we now want to do differently? And with that, but I now heard from several teams, they come up sometimes with easy things like your quick fix, actually, but in IT, right? Where they figured, well, if we do it more like this or that, then we reduce the carbon footprint of our system, or we make the system more accessible, or anything like that in those three pillars, right? So this is a, a possibility you can do. Now, I wonder, first I thought, we will together really gather data, but I also know that there's no official public internet here. That's what I figured later on, and so maybe this is not a good approach. Therefore, I thought I just want to share with you some questions you can use to assess with your team. And if we, and I have kind of put them under the various values of agile development, which are like the focus on the customer, self-organization, continuous learning, and transparency. And so if we look for constant customer focus, we can start asking like, 
how did we actually decide on the target audience? And I want to make this a little bit broader because we, at least I like to work with personas if I think of target audience because it makes life so much easier and in order to find out whom we are writing all that stuff for and how to prioritize stories and so on. However, what I nowadays do is every once in a while saying, well, what if our target persona would be the complete opposite of the one we are focusing on right now? just in order to find out how inclusive or exclusive the system actually is that we are building here. And, and just this, this example, well, I said this already with the last name, if it's um, that it requires to, uh, like three characters. Another example, which is kind of famous, is the one with the, also famous means typically bad in that sense, but the one was a soap dispenser that only worked for white skin and not for dark skin. Again, it's software detecting the skin color and then saying like, okay, there's soap that must be pulled out, right? But it didn't work. And I just think, well, I'm not only thing, I deeply believe that the teams building stuff like that, they are not doing this on intention. And I'm 100% I'm sure that the teams I've worked with, we also have ignored a lot of like outer groups, of which we made outer groups, by the way, we, we built the system. So it's not intentional. And therefore, what we can do is at least question at times if our target personas maybe are in a way that they exclude a lot of other people which still might not be in our target frame, but we want to have an inclusive system, right? So that would be one thing about how did we decide on our target audience. Another question to assess if we think about self-organizing uh, now during product creation, we can start asking how are the offices actually fueled we are creating that product in. So is it fossil fuel? Is it wind, solar, whatever? And most often when we start asking that question, hardly anyone knows the answer. But that's the good thing. Now we start asking. And with asking and then requesting transparency, things might change, right? Um, oh, maybe I add something to the energy part, um, which is about data centers and the cloud we are using, because this is also, a, that's actually the biggest chunk of this 21% that you saw before that's uh, projected in 2030, IT will consume 21% of the overall energy consumption. And most of it comes from cloud infrastructure and data centers. And some of them, if not most, are at the moment claiming they're on a good path and, and they're working on like, yeah, being at least uh, climate neutral and all kinds of stuff. However, none of them so far have made their data public about that. So there is no transparency at all and we can just believe their story or not. And again, if we would keep asking when we make the decision which data center we are going with, maybe over time, the more people are asking for that, the more likely it is that they will make it transparent. Okay, then the next one, continuous learning. I've picked here, how can we ensure the product provides the best possible performance with the least amount of resources across devices and platforms? You can even think of, can we provide settings for the user so that less resources are used? Is this configurable? Most of the time, we just don't care. And I think we should start to care about that. Then transparency, what data are we collecting from users and do we need to collect all of this data? And maybe I want to add, does the user know we collect all this data? So this is more the part of the social pillar. And you see this 
all goes together and we shouldn't ignore the one for the other. So, um, what we have done is we came up with quite some statements or questions like that and created an assessment. And this is kind of what I thought we are doing, but again, because of the internet, it's not really there and also the font is not really that well. However, I still will give you the link so you can go with that assessment and try it with your team or first try it yourself and see how it's working for you. And um, what I would like to try here in, uh, we will see how readable it is with the font and want to share with you a report from another group that um, I made with going through that assessment. So you get a little bit of a feel how this can look alike. Um, wait, I need to go here and there. And I guess it's not visible at all. What do you, can you read anything? In the first, in the first row, <clears throat> you can read anything. Let me see. Does this go better or worse? Okay, so this is like the outcome on the, the highest level, if you will. For different areas. Sorry, I'm diving here. <laughs> um, and the four areas, you, you see, well, first, the three pillars we have been talking about, like social, environmental, economic. And then there's the fourth one, which is holistic, really taking it all together. And then um, here it is like, see, I can hardly see it. I think this is says two, and up there it says four, and the highest would be a five. So the five would say like, yes, we do that for all those statements, whereas like zero means probably we, we don't know and one is no, we don't do it. So just so you know kind of what we are looking at. And if we look at, well, let's first go for something. Oh, this is better readable, right? Maybe at least from me. So social there, the average was 3.56, which is higher than everything else. Let's go in here. And you can't read, so you have to rely on me. So what I see here, is this readable? Also not, you only see your data set. It's in the very first row, you can read it. So I read it out. Um, this one is the highest score, which is 4.31. Uh, and it says the team implements policies to ensure the balance of great user experience with protecting privacy. So that was the social part I was diving into, right? And this is something I see quite often, and which also gives me hope, because I believe 10 years back, we started talking about privacy and security, but not much has happened. But now things have changed. And so in this area, whenever we talk about privacy, security of the system for the users, the, the values are much higher than for other things. Um, let's go look for one that's much lower. So this would be this one, that's at 2.67, which was that group, how, it, how they rated it. It says, the team monitors the product service impact benefits and harms on individuals, communities, and societies. So if it's so low, it means this is not monitored at all. What kind of effect the product has on individuals, communities, societies. Maybe one more in this area, and then we perhaps look at, I don't know, one other place. Um, this is a 383. And it says, company acts fairly to all stakeholders. Well, maybe here it says, well, whatever that means, we don't know. But it's kind of, it, it's higher up at least. And um, yeah, so this is at least something then. Oh, let me see. Can I go back? Yeah. Let's go to the environment and see if we find something interesting here. Um, let's go for the highest. I believe that's the highest, highest 378. Here the group says, 
The mo company monitors and proactively seeks to reduce waste products. That's also a tendency that we see over time, that people look more after what waste is created, really. Um, then we have the lowest, that's 132. The team monitors the calm footprint of the system. That's a completely co new concept for most of people. So that's also not a surprise to see this here. And so the thing is, with this assessment, there are all these statements. So I, you now just heard like four examples or so, right? And where people say in a team, is this true for us or is it false for us? And then you see overall, what is it? Where do we stand? Um, the assessment even says then something like, um, are we all agreeing or are we completely dispersed on that? So because the average value might not really telling if we have two people saying one and, and three say five or so, then we are somewhere in the middle, but nobody was there. So you can also look at this like that. And what I find helpful with that is that this topic is so overwhelming, it's so big that we often feel helpless. We see the planet is on fire. We see all the floods and fires and, and all of all the pandemic, if you will. So all kinds of things. But then the question is, what can we do? And for me, with this assessment, it helps us to just come up, even if it's a tiny little step that we can do, and then we can also measure it again and see, did we make any progress or not? And um, now that you think, well, now I advertise this so much, so it has been published under Creative Commons, so it, you can use it for free. And um, however, there are li some limitations with like configurations. So for free, it's like the whole package, but if you want to reduce it, you have to pay. This is interesting. Normally, it's the other way around. <laughs> um, and however, for members of the Scrum Alliance, it should be all. In, in the whole package. So this is the main thing that I wanted to share with you. And um, let me see, we are here. And for me, actually, the key thing is what we can do is that we need to change our conversations. So we need to ask different questions than we did so far. And this way, increase sustainability. So that's, for me, at least where we are right now, kind of the next step. And for closing, this is the last slide. And actually, this one is where you find that assessment, the full feature thing, which is the Creative Commons. And right, see, I thought I still have two minutes, but I don't. But maybe we can run two more minutes for any questions, comments. But I'm also around. One thing that is sort of key was uh, when we are actually developing software. So, so the, I think one of the very important things that we brought out was about, you know, uh, when we develop software, we don't think about the end user. And that, that looking at it should be a part of it. Third is in case if you are making a change into an existing software, when you use the word sustainable, you should be are you going to compromise the flexibility for the business or are you giving it away in the even after So that becomes your sustainable Yeah. And these are things that are coming up very common. So I think the first and the third questions are kind of together for me. So, which is also one of my learnings, and I might learn more and then would answer differently, right? <laughs> so, this is where I am right now. But my learning is, if we focus on sustainability, the software actually becomes more efficient and more performant, because we try to make the footprint smaller, and this is really the general footprint, not, and if we make that smaller, also the carbon footprint, get smaller. So this is kind of a win-win to focus on this. And I wasn't aware of that. So this is, I think, a, a good thing. And the other thing is, well, some people even think if we start looking at sustainability, it is against Agile because Agile has this short-term thinking, 
which I never bought into actually. For me, always a sprint was something that we are measuring in order to know where are we really want to go. Are we on the right track? Is this where we want to go or not? So still, the long-term thinking, I believe, is important and should be supported more now with sustainability. So it's kind, for me, it's kind of the opposite. So, more and more tools are coming out on this aspect. So, it's really, there's a lot going on. If, um, one uh, good source is the Green Software Foundation. They have created quite some tools which are also be able to be used in open source. Uh, then, uh, speaking of open source, several open source products are now coming with their carbon footprint, which doesn't mean like all, all, right? We are, we are starting here and, and things are changing. But this does exist. There is more out there now than there was like three months ago. And I guess in a month you again would see more. So there are metrics out there really that help you to measure that. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. That, um, it, it's a big topic and I don't have a good answer, so greenwashing just, just in general. First of all, I also have a positive answer to that. And my positive answer is, over the course of my professional life, I learned whenever something is used for washing, actually it is kind of successful. Because we, we also see this with Agile. Who claims all to be Agile and is not, right? So this means also it has gained some traction, and it's important enough that people do that. So that's kind of my positive end. Well, I try to be an optimist. And the other thing is, and it's, both are not real answers, but the other thing is a client of mine said, like, we really want to do it because if we claim to do something on sustainability, but then people find out we don't, then it's worse then if we wouldn't have said it in the first place. So that this hopefully also enforces it. And also, well, another statement I have with that is, uh, sometimes we also are looking for perfection, especially there. And this doesn't exist and we shouldn't do it. You know, you can also argue, well, you are great, you are here, but you have been flying here. So what is it? Why, sh why are you talking about sustainability? You should have not come or whatever, right? And, and so this is, this is true for a lot of things and people and companies and so on. So my point here is we all should try the best we can. And I have my, my rationale when I say, OK, when I come here and I talk about that topic and I find here that many people, and if only maybe three of them are doing something, then maybe I have made a difference. That's big enough. Next to, well, I, of course, I compensate the flight, but this is not really helping, but it's just one thing. Exactly. Yeah, but, but my point is more often when we think somebody talks about that, or also a company, they have to be perfect, but that's, that's the wrong goal. Everyone just tries whatever. They can try. And I think, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That, that's kind of, yeah, what I hope for. Ah, I see. They have also gone longer. OK, so, uh, but I also feel like we, we should close in so that we can all be ready for the next session. Thank you so much for your interest.
and let me know if you find something that you do, that you did, what it did for you. And I would be happy to hear feedback. You find me on LinkedIn, for example. Thank you. Um, I will upload it. It's not there yet. I actually, I have changed it to the last minute. Because I, I saw with the internet and so on that this was a problem. Yeah, I will upload it. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's the most important topic uh, that... Um, Exactly. You know, Agile doesn't matter if we are not working on this topic. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's also a high energy consumption field. Yeah, yeah. And still, it could also help. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm packing here. Hey, and yeah.